Hey guys, in January of 2021, we took a look at how to install Open Project in Docker. And uh, as things are wont to do, um, over the last couple of years or so, that process has changed a bit. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at how to install Open Project 12 in Docker, uh, kind of going through the full process that they recommend over on their website. And once we've got everything installed, we should see something that looks like this. Uh, we're also gonna go through the process of doing some troubleshooting stuff or, or me talking about some troubleshooting stuff that I had to go through to make this work with Cloudflare. But before we get into all of that, we do have some bills to pay here. So here's a quick message from today's video sponsor. This episode is sponsored by Linode, the largest independent cloud computing provider. If you don't want to, or can't for whatever reason, self-host applications the way we talk about on this channel, Linode provides virtual servers that make it easy and affordable for you to host anything in the cloud. You can set up any of the applications that they have available in their marketplace with just a few clicks, or you can set up your own Docker VPS and install basically whatever you'd like in a Docker container. They have load balancers and firewalls available to help keep your apps online and safe. If you run into any trouble getting set up, Linode comes with amazing 24 seven customer support by phone or ticket, along with hundreds of guides and tutorials to help you get started. Sign up today at linode.com slash dbtech and get a $100 60 day credit on your new Linode account. Links are in the description. Now, just as a bit of a heads up, uh, this is Portainer where we're going to see all of the containers that are running. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight containers that actually need to be up and running in order to get things configured. Uh, once it is configured though, one of those containers will shut itself off. Uh, one of these containers uh, is actually meant to do an auto heal uh, that is part of the setup process. And I think that's where a lot of people are getting hung up uh, is that the installation process is tediously long. Luckily for us, the developers are sort of aware of that, it appears. If we go over to their uh, installation for Docker, uh, once we go through their steps here, they, they don't have all of the steps listed here. Uh, and that's kind of why I wanted to make this video. But uh, another reason is that it says right here, after a while, open projects should be up and running here on this URL with these credentials. What they don't tell you is, is that that process could take 20 minutes for it to go through its installation process. Uh, there will be a container that will that will come up and and crash or 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 not work as intended. And then the other container, the auto heal container, will bring it back up and it will do its thing for a while and then it will crash. And then the uh, auto heal container will bring it back up and it will go for a while. Uh, and what I've noticed is it's it's kind of a five restart pull or restart scenario. Like the, the container has to come up and, and crash and come up and crash like five times before it actually goes through the, the rest of the setup process. Uh, I've gone through this multiple times just to verify, and it seems to be about five times of, of the container coming back up uh, before it actually does everything it needs to do and finishes the installation. Uh, and I'm gonna kind of show you that as we go through this process. So with that said, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clear this server so that we can kind of start fresh. And then uh, once we've got that, or once I've got that done, we'll come back and go through the installation process. A few moments later. Okay, so here we are just a few minutes later. I've gone ahead and cleaned everything up. Of course, this isn't necessary for you to do. This is just what I'm doing so that I make sure that I'm starting from where you will be starting with regards to this particular container. If we look at my container list, uh, I've just got uh, Cloudflare and Portainer up and running. If I go to my images, just Cloudflare and Portainer. Networks, bridge, host, none. Volumes, Portainer should be good to go. So of course the next steps will actually be to SSH into our server and uh, then clone the repository. So let's jump in and do that now. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the Windows terminal here. I'm gonna go ahead and make this bigger. The first thing I need to do is actually SSH into my server. Now I am using Open Media Vault 6 for this setup. You don't have to if you don't want to, but that's what I'm using for this tutorial here. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is just SSH into my server and then go on to the next steps. Okay, so here we are. We are uh, SSH into our server as root. Um, and of course, the, the first thing we wanna do is actually create a folder for uh, for open project to, to reside in when we, for the cloning process. So what we're gonna do is mkdir uh, and then open project. And now that folder has been created. If we wanna verify that, we can just do an ls. Oops, ls. And then right here is our open project folder. Uh, so the next thing we wanna do is actually clone the repository from uh, Open Projects GitHub repository, right? So uh, all of this will be available in the description down below, so you can follow along if you would like to do that. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that next as far as the cloning is concerned. 
We're gonna paste that in there. So just get clone that repository. We're only gonna go one level deep. We're looking for the stable branch uh, version 12. And then we're going to put this into the open project folder that we just created. So we're gonna go ahead and enter. And just that quickly, it is cloned to the repository. So next steps will be actually going into the folder that we just cloned into. So we're gonna do a CD open project. And if we, uh, let's clear our screen. Oops, control L, we'll do that. We do an LS uh, dash A like so basically list everything, but show us everything. If we don't do the dash A, we won't see any of the dot files like dot env, dot get ignore. We won't see any of that kind of stuff if we don't have the dash A on there. So that's what we're gonna do like so. And here we can see we've got a, a compose folder, a dot get folder, a dot get ignore folder or file, a Kubernetes and a readme. Our next step will be to CD into compose. And again, we'll do an LS dash A. And here we can see we've got control, uh, Docker compose uh, control. Uh, that one's actually in there in case you want to um, make modifications and deploy that way. Anytime you pull this, it's going to overwrite the docker compose.yml file. Um, and they've made the recommendation that if you need to change anything uh, for your particular uh, de uh, deployment process, that you make those changes in the, uh, the docker compose.control.yml file that's in their, uh, in their repository of information as far as how to do this. Uh, the next thing we want to do, though, um, just to make sure that everything will deploy correctly, is we want to uh, basically rename the .env.example file to just .env. Um, and, and there's not really a rename option here, so we're just going to move the files. We're going to do mv.env.example, and then just to .env, like so. And now if we do an ls-a, we can see that that .env.example has been renamed to just .env. So the next thing we want to do at this point, now that we've renamed that file effectively, is we want to edit that file. So we're going to do nano.env, uh, oops, .env. And here we can see uh, what their setup looks like here. Now I have modified mine uh, to work with uh, the, the domain name that I'm gonna use. In this case, it's going to be open.dbtech.com uh, rather than just localhost, like it says right here on the open project host name. We're gonna change that to our actual URL. Uh, if we don't do that, we're gonna run into issues later when we actually get logged in. Um, just a bunch of issues. So we're just gonna change it here. That way we don't have to worry about it later. So uh, what we're gonna do is change this to open.dbttech.com like so. I just wanna make sure I've got my notes over here and that looks correct. Uh, the other thing I like to do, um, I don't know if you need to, I like to change this port. I like to remove that 127.0.0.1. I don't think it's necessary for this. Um, so I removed it. Um, the HTTPS is set to false. That's fine initially, for, for just deploying it, making sure everything works. Uh, you probably should though, uh, change that to true uh, once you've got your domain name and that sort of thing set up with your reverse proxy. Uh, I will be using Cloudflare tunnels for this. Um, and I actually ended up spending an hour banging my head on the door, on the on the desk here, uh, because there was something going on in the back end that I didn't pick up on initially. And I'm gonna show you that here when we get to that point. So <clears throat> once you've got this set up and ready to go, of course you should probably change uh, the, the username, and, or at least change the password here uh, for that, just so that it's not a uh, password in, in leet speak, so to, so to speak. Uh, but basically we've got all of our stuff set up in here um, and, and you can modify that to, to fit your needs. We're just gonna leave this as it is for the time being. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and do control O and enter and control X to save and exit the, the editing there. Uh, and then I think um, the next thing that we want to do is just create docker compose up dash D. Now, um, we're gonna take a look at the docker compose that's available to us uh, just so you can kind of see what's in there. There's a lot of just nutty stuff that they've done to the docker compose since the last time we've deployed this again back in July or January of 2021. So we're just going to take a look at it, uh, make sure that there's nothing nefarious looking in there. Um, and, and then once we're, we're kind of content with what that looks like, we'll come back and actually deploy uh, all of the containers that are needed for this. So what we're gonna do is nano uh, docker compose.yml. And uh, here is that Docker Compose. We've got a version 3.7. We've got a couple of networks, a couple of volumes, some restart policies where they're kind of setting um, some, some variables for this. Uh, if we scroll down further though, uh, we've got uh, services under, un, under here, we've got a database of Postgres 13. 
Um, and then a lot of the stuff that we've declared up above uh, is is available or, or has been called in uh, via you know uh, variables and that sort of thing like this. All of this has been set up up here. So that's just kind of what's going on there. Uh, so we've got our database, uh, we've got a cache um, that will is using memcached, so that should uh, help us speed some things up by storing some stuff in memory. We've got a proxy on port 8080. Uh, if you need to change that, uh, make sure that you change it. Uh, let me make sure that it's not up here anywhere. Yeah, so uh, the, the open, oh yes, yeah, so we've got the, the host name here. I didn't change any of this when I deployed um, and I left everything on port 8080, um, but, but you can change it if you need to. We've got some environment. Uh, variables, depends on networks, again, web, um, and, and just kind of the, the stuff for the web, its dependencies, its commands. Uh, we've got an auto heal, like I said, that we will actually need this for one of the containers to continually restart and crash in order to get this to work. Uh, we've got some workers, we've got a cron, we've got a cedar. The cedar will, will come up, do its thing, and then shut itself off. Uh, we will see that once everything is set up and configured, that the cedar container will exit, and we don't need it anymore, and it's fine, but I would leave it there. Um, but that's kind of what's going on in this Docker Compose. Uh, once we're happy, once we've seen kind of everything that's going on in here, uh, we can exit out of this and then do Docker Compose up dash D. Now, the dash D, if you're not familiar, is for detached. We could run it without the dash D and it would do everything it's gonna do, but it would be determined or be dependent on this terminal window staying open. If we didn't have the dash D and we deployed it and everything was working, and then we closed this window, it would, uh, it would shut down all of the containers and we don't want that. So we're gonna run it kind of detached or independent of uh, this terminal window being open. So just with that out of the way, what we wanna do next is hit enter. So it's gonna go through and create uh, networks and volumes, and then it's gonna start pulling all of the stuff that we need uh, for all of the different containers that this that this setup requires. Uh, this will take a little while, um, and once it's done, we'll come back and kind of move on to the next steps for this, uh, which again, will be a lot more waiting, but we'll come back once all of this has been pulled. Okay, so at this point, uh, we can see that everything is starting to uh, actually create as far as the different containers are concerned. So of course, the next thing we wanna do is actually log in to our portainer so that we can kind of see some stuff going on in the background. Okay, so now we can see all of these are done. So we're kind of good in this arena. So I'm gonna go ahead and minimize this and make this full screen. And here we can see this compose underscore web underscore one is starting. If we open this up, we're gonna see uh, setting the, the Postgres version of 13, Postgres, and it's just kind of setting up some configuration stuff for this. And uh, we're just gonna, we're gonna pop that open in a new tab so we can kind of keep track of it. But um, basically this will, this line will kind of repeat itself five times uh, before we're really set up and ready to go, which I think is kind of weird. Um, but if we, if we just kind of watch back here, refresh, it's, it still says it's starting. Eventually it will crash and exit and crash and like it'll just kind of go through this process. So once we see that this has, that, that this line right here has kind of repeated itself multiple times, uh, we'll start to see some other stuff happening that tells us that we are actually getting somewhere. Uh, it shows that this will take quite a while. Um, in my experience has been, you know, 15 or 20 minutes sometimes. Uh, that may be dependent on uh, your system specs and that sort of thing. Um, but here we can see that it's duplicated but now it just needs to do it a few more times before we can move on to the next steps. Also, while we're waiting, I suppose, what we can do is actually come back over to here. Here it says unhealthy. We're gonna give this a second, but in the meantime, if we take a look at the uh, logs of this auto heal, pop this open, uh, here we can see that it is found to be unhealthy, restarting the container uh, now with a 10 second timeout, and it's just going to, Kind of, it's just gonna go through this process. I don't know why, uh, but there's something weird about its setup process that requires it to do this. Um, so we're just gonna hang out and wait until this part is complete. So here it says starting. We've got our third line, even though this says uh, restarting failed, it didn't, it actually did work. Um, so now we've got three lines. So now I'm gonna shut up this time now that we've kind of seen all of the different things going on here and uh, we'll take a look at this once it's done. 
one eternity later. Okay, so here it has gone about five times. Uh, now it's actually starting to do some stuff. Like I mentioned that it would. Uh, basically at this point, we're, again, we're just gonna kind of hang out and wait for it to do its thing. Uh, but I did want to show that it is finally doing something, uh, which is which is brutal. I hate waiting this long uh, for, for anything. Um, but I think this is where some people who had requested that I redo this video, I think this is where some people were getting held up. It felt like it was broken. Uh, in fact, when I was going through this, I thought it was broken, um, but here we are. Uh, everything seems to be doing what it needs to do at this point. Uh, so we come back over here to containers and then we pop this open. Uh, like I said, uh, Cedar exited, everything else is running. So let's just pop this open real quick. And okay, it can't provide a secure connection. So that tells me that it's probably up, it's probably working, it's probably doing its thing. So the next thing that I wanna do here is take a look at my Cloudflare tunnels. Now, like I said, I created open.dbtech.com. I pointed it to HTTP, uh, and then of course the IP address and port that this is on. We pop this open, unable to resolve it. Oh, okay. I think I know what the issue is here. I think I screwed myself up. I'm gonna fix this and come right back. And if I'm right, I'll explain it to you. Okay, so the problem was that when I did this, when I cleaned up the server, all of the Docker containers and images and, and, and volumes and that sort of thing, I accidentally trashed my Argo tunnel, my, my Cloudflare tunnel stuff. Uh, so what I did, uh, I, I brought it back up using the, the command that was in there. Uh, in, in tunnels, I used, uh, the, the, do or the, 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 the Docker command, I ran that uh, and deployed it, everything then came back up. And then I switched my uh, host uh, over here to uh, HTTP like so, and then deployed and here we are. Um, and now we can get signed in. And I wanna take a look at something here. So we're gonna do admin, admin. Username and password is both admin. Okay, so now we are signed in, we're good to go. Um, and if, like I said earlier, if you are running, Cloudflare, uh, whether it's tunnels or through a reverse proxy or, or whatever the case is. Um, if we come into here, there's a chance that if you go to administration, this page won't load. And what I mean by it won't load is that we're gonna see something like this, uh, where we're on open.dbtech.com slash admin, right? If I just come back to open.dbtech.com and refresh, everything looks fine. Uh, but if I come over here and I want to go to my account, we get a white page. If we go over here to my page, it sort of loads. If we go over again to administration, um, it doesn't load. And here is what I figured out. If we open this up and go to F, or open up F12, right, and take a look at the console here, right here, it actually tells us what the issue is. And I missed it for a while and I'm not happy about that. So I wanna share it with you. Uh, right here, we can see that refuse to execute inline script because it violates the following content security policy directive. Uh, and this is rocket loader. Uh, this is the file that's causing this issue, and that is actually part of Cloudflare. Uh, if we've got this turned on, if we go to our, our domain name, go to speed, optimization, and scroll down to where it says rocket loader, and turn that off, we're gonna go ahead and minimize this, and we're just gonna do a control F5, and there it is. That seems to fix the issue. There's something with the rocket loader that, that causes things to break when using uh, open project in Docker uh, because of the way they've built this Docker image or whatever the case is. Um, but here we can see that everything is working. If we go to you know my page, uh, this all loads appropriately and, and, and just as fast as you'd want it to, I suppose. There's nothing in there right now, so that's why it's not loading anything. Oh, there it goes. Anyway, so everything is now working, uh, but we did have to actually turn off the rocket loader in Cloudflare for this to work. Now, if you're not using Cloudflare, you're not gonna probably have that issue uh, because rocket loader is a, is a Cloudflare thing. So uh, just know that if you are using Cloudflare and you try to do stuff and it doesn't work, you get that white page that it is probably the rocket loader uh, configuration that you need to disable in order to get in here. Now, of course, at this point, we can go in and we can do basically whatever we want. You know, we can, uh, you know, just go in and administer, we can create projects, that sort of thing. Uh, one thing that I think is cool is they have finally integrated with, with NextCloud uh, so that you can store your files in your NextCloud instance and have kind of a more robust instance of both uh, Open Project and NextCloud. So uh, definitely check that out if you're interested. If you'd like me to take a look at that and make a video about it, let me know in the comment section down below. Also, don't forget that all of this will be available in the description. You can find links to all of this uh, in the description so you can follow along and, and have all access to all of the resources that I have access to and have made available to you. So 
Uh, I think that kind of wraps up everything I wanted to talk about in this video. I do want to thank you guys for spending a few minutes of your day with me today. Uh, also, while you're down in the description, there are some ways that you can support the channel, uh, whether it's becoming a patron or a channel member or uh, joining dbtech.vans. Any of those will give you access to ad-free content. If you're tired of seeing the, the ads that I bake in and the ads that, that I throw in from, from YouTube, uh, really as little as a dollar a month will give you access to everything uh, with no ads. So just something to keep in mind there if you want to do that. Uh, but with that said, I'm going to wrap this up. Again, thank you for spending a few minutes of your day with me today, and I will talk to you in the next video.